This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Big Paul here. Today we are going to talk about Dorian Yates hit training. This is one that just drives me nuts. Pretty much every gym bro I talk to when I try to correct things that they're doing, fix form, fix the frequency of their training, fix the volume of their training, they like to cite Dorian Yates as their reason for training like fucking idiots. Dorian Yates happens to be my favorite bodybuilder. I love Dorian. Dorian is my bodybuilding hero, probably closely followed by Arnold. And I Dorian, to me, was absolutely amazing because he made the most out of nothing. And he figured this all out on his own. He didn't have a coach. He prepped himself. And he was just a model of discipline integrity and hard work which is something i aspire to be and I, it really when it, when you look at it when you boil it down to it that's what made dorian successful was his discipline his dedication his hard work his drive you know i'm sure the training program had something to do with it but um you know dorian was very disciplined with his diet too nobody ever likes to talk about that um dorian was a very disciplined with his rest dorian used PEDs intelligently, um, and he just did everything the right way. So it, when you line up everything perfectly with work ethic, training, um, diet, rest, all those things, you get great results. But anyway, we're going to dig in and actually take a look at the program and what he really did. We'll look at some of his training. We'll see what he actually did, and I'll talk about it. And I think maybe you'll come out of this with a different perspective than what you had uh, coming in. We're going to talk about it in just one second. So here's the funny thing. I've actually done Doreen Yates training. I did it myself. I, I did it for a couple years when I was younger. Um, and it was really the first time I actually made any progress. And then I kind of found Dante Trudell after that. And I get a lot of people talking about, well, Dorian trained this way, Dorian trained that way, Dorian trained this way. Like when, they like to argue with me about when I make training suggestions. And, and most of these people have never actually looked at how Dorian trained and have never actually seen his program or done his program. So, we're going to take a look at his training program, how he split it up. This is from his heavy-duty routine from his Blood and Guts book. It's directly from the book that he that was published in, I don't know, early 90s. I remember picking it up. I think it was in college. I bought that book. I read that thing from front to cover multiple fucking times. Um, I was obsessed with Dorian Yates when I was younger. He was, he was the man. Um, and this training program was, was pretty different from what I had started off doing. I did more of an Arnold Schwarzenegger style program from his encyclopedia of bodybuilding when it was in high school. You name it, I've tried it over the years. I did, it went from that to, um, dog crap training, DC training, Dante Trudell. I worked with him for years. Um, uh, I've done every type of training. I trained, I did powerlifting for a while. I've done just about every kind of training you can imagine over the last 30 years. Uh, but Dorian Yates' heavy-duty routine, I think most people misunderstand how he trained. And, it was, you know, there's a few things you got to think about when, the way he trained. So, one, Dorian split the body up four ways. I, as far as I know, I've never seen any other bodybuilder split, split things up the way he split shit up. Um, he had his uh, workout day one, which was delts, traps. Uh, triceps and abs and he would do on his day one day two was back and he would exclusively just do back on day two then he would take a rest day so that was day three day four was chest biceps and then he would train abs again a hey, take a rest on day five day six he would do legs and calves he would he would just call it legs and calves i just say legs and on day seven rest and repeat now i've seen routines where he would do everything once every six days that he there, that there wasn't uh, i think earlier in his career i think he switched to this later in his career but from what i recall earlier in his career that he actually would train six days 
um, and then repeat. So he was training every every body part once every six days, somewhere around there. But so he would hit everything once a week. Uh, was was typically what he would do. And when you look at the volume, um, you know this is another thing that people misunderstand with the volume. There were a lot of warm up sets in here. Uh, you call it what you will, but D Dorian Yates actually did more volume than what people think. You know, they, I, I hear guys talking about how, you know, he did one all out set and that was it. Um, that's not how he trained. So, you know, for example, let's take a look at his, his, um, delt workout. So he had, um, let, let's look seated dumbbell presses. He had one, two, three sets on seated dumbbell presses. Dumbbell lateral raises, he had one, two. So we're, we're up to five sets, five working sets now. One arm cable lateral raise, we had one set there. So we have a total of six total working sets for for uh, for delts. Um, and now if you throw in warm-up sets, if you're doing a couple warm-up sets, it's probably more like 15, 16 sets um, that he was doing. Uh, I know Dorian, if I recall correctly, Dorian would pyramid up to a working set. Um, and that, that's how he would do things. Um, and he also, Dorian would do, uh, you know, people said that he would train beyond failure. So I, 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 I hate that beyond failure, beyond failure thing. You're, you're not really training beyond failure. If you watch the videos of him and we'll look here in a second, he would have his partner help him do extra reps. Uh, it's essentially the same as doing a drop set or doing another set. It's, you know, so really his reps were more than what the reps were here. He would just throw in, you know, a few sets of, you know, extra, you would get extra reps in by his partner helping him. So it's essentially the same as doing it. If you don't have a partner, instead of doing, you know, the force reps, you can do a drop set. It's the same fucking thing. Your, your partner's just taking the weight off of it for you. Uh, for back. So we l l let's take a look at back here. So he had um, the hammer strength pull down. I know he loved the reverse hammer strength pull down. So he had three total sets on that. Um, um, he also had a uh, machine pullover, or you could alternate with a. Um, he would alternate. I think it was if I with a barbell row each workout. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 sets for back. Now, Dorian had the best back in bodybuilding, and I still think had one of the best backs. I don't think it's a coincidence that he was doing the highest volume on back. Okay? You know, back, backs, you know, there are a lot of different muscles in the back, so it kind of drives me nuts when people just say back, so you have to change angles and use different exercises to hit the different muscles. But he had a quite a bit of volume on back when you take a look at it. And if you count workout, workout, warm-up sets, it's probably more like 20, 25 sets that he was actually fucking doing for back. Um, chest. Uh, let's look at his chest workout. So he had three sets, four sets on uh, incline barbell press. He had two sets on a machine seated press. He would do like a hammer strength machine. He had one set of cable crossovers. Uh, so we have four uh, seven, nine, uh, nine, ten, like we're of ten sets for chest. Okay. Uh, biceps. Uh, he would do incline dumbbell curl, standing easy curl bar, preacher curl machine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, five sets on biceps, which I don't think is enough. And he was doing low reps on biceps. Also not a coincidence here. It was, it, everybody said that Dorian's weakest body part was his biceps. He had shitty biceps. I don't think it's a coincidence that he had shitty biceps because he was doing low volume and low reps on biceps, which doesn't seem to work that well on biceps. Um, he had his abs again. Those were all 20 reps. Uh, leg day. Uh, Dorian, and this is another thing too. Everybody thinks that you have to do uh, you have to do squats to have big legs. Dorian didn't do squats. But most pro bodybuilders I talk to don't do squats. I see tons of power lifters that can squat a ton and have skinny little legs. So squats clearly aren't the answer for having big legs. Uh, and Dorian didn't do squats. He said he had a back issue or something like that, that he couldn't do squats. So let's look at this. He started off with leg extension, which is the way I like to start off my back or my leg workout. So we had one, two, three uh, sets of leg extensions. Leg press, he did one, two, three sets of uh, leg press. So we're up to six sets. Hack squats, two sets. We're up to eight sets. Lying leg curls. 
stiff legged deadlifts and single legged leg curls. So we had one, two, three, four, or five. So we had five sets here. So we're we're up somewhere around. Let's see, one, two, three, four. We got three, seven, uh, nine, twelve. Um, and then he has calves in here. It's, you know, somewhere around 15 sets, not counting warm-up sets. And, you know, some of the warm-up sets get heavy. You're not going to failure on those sets. So we're, we're talking about 20, 25 sets for, for legs. So Dorian's program wasn't as low volume as what people think it was. And I actually like the programming. The way he has things laid out makes a lot of sense. You know, he was very intelligent about how he laid it out. Um, you know, so that, you know, th this is just a complete misconception that people have. They, I, I, I get these guys that think Dorian went in and did one all out balls out set and that was it. That was the end of it. And then they justify lifting heavy weights with shitty form. Um, uh, and that's, you know, to be like Dorian, to be like Dorian. So it doesn't work that way. All right. So let's take a look at Dorian's actual form, how he did things. Um, I got a video queued up from his Blood and Guts DVD. If you haven't seen it, um, it's on YouTube. You can find it. It is fucking amazing. I, I watched it so many times when I was younger and deconstructed it and tried to emulate it. One of the things that you'll note with Dorian, this this is from his, uh, this is from his uh, back workout. I mean, here he's doing reverse grip hammer strength pull downs. And you'll notice with Dorian, his form is perfect. And I use, this, this is another thing that drives me mad. I, I get chuckleheads all the time that are using Dorian Yates as their reason for slinging heavy weights around. They're like, you get, bro, you got to lift heavy to get big. Um, Dorian's form was perfect on everything. And here you'll see like they're going through the forest reps right now. You know, talking about going beyond failure. Um, you know, they're essentially set extenders. So really, if you count the forced reps here, um, you know, you know, he's getting a lot more reps than the it says on the program. It, it's, it's pretty interesting to watch him train because he, he just trained perfectly. You know, form was perfect. Everything was spot on. Dude, dude was just meticulous with his training. I mean, he was meticulous with everything. So it makes sense. It's honestly kind of surprising that he got hurt so much at the end of his career. I think that had to do more with training heavy at the end of prep, which I know a lot of guys say you need to train heavy at the end of prep, but I, I disagree with that. I think that's just asking to get yourself hurt. Um, uh, I usually up the volume and lower the weight a little bit towards the end of prep to prevent injuries. You're dry, things tear. You know, people talk about losing muscle. You're on so much, so many anabolics at the end of prep. You're not going to lose muscle, or at least not that much. I, I trained lighter this year at the end of prep, and I was way bigger than I was last year. So I, I know that's not true. So another thing I want you to take a look here is how Dorian deadlift, dead, deadlifts. And I talk about training like a bodybuilder and not a power lifter. You know, a lot of gym bros try to train like a power lifter and not a bodybuilder. And I think from the floor deadlifts are pointless for bodybuilding. And you'll see in this video, Dorian does deadlifts. They're kind of like a hybrid stiff leg rack pull type thing. I don't know. I mean, he's not in a rack, but it's, it's about the same depth as you get on a rack pull. And he's not really doing that much weight. I mean, relatively speaking, it's... And also note, let's go back and watch that one again. You tell me on his deadlifts that he does for his lower back, he's using these specifically for lower back um, thickness, I, I, I'm I assuming, but it seems that's the way it's programmed. You tell me here, do you think Dorian Yates is going to failure on these? I don't think so. And I noticed on a lot of his exercises that he's not actually going to failure. So that, that whole thing about him going to failure on every fucking thing is also not true. So so watch these. Let's Let's see where he stops. Let's see, we're getting here, was that, six reps? He puts it down. He definitely had more in the tank there. But sometimes you don't, you know, like deadlifts, something like deadlifts, the injury risk is so high when you go to failure and your form starts to break down. Uh, it's just dangerous going to failure when, when you get to that point. So I, I don't see any point in training to failure at, at that point. But <laughs> go back through and watch his videos and see how many sets he actually goes to failure on. Some things he goes beyond failure, some stuff he doesn't. Um, I think he goes to mechanical failure 
where a form starts to break down or when you get into a risky area. But Dorian trained a lot smarter than what people think he did. And, and people you often use him as the excuse to train like a fucking idiot. All right, so let's wrap this up, summarize all this. So Dorian Yates hit training. You know, what? what's special about it? What, what made Dorian so special? Um, is his hit training the secret to his his success? I think it was a, a, it's certainly a component of it, but I don't. I think hit is a bit of a uh, misconception or or mis, mislabeling, I guess, of how he trained. You look you look at it. He did a lot more volume than what what people think. Uh, his reps were very controlled. He mostly did machines. Um, he did do some compound movements, but not many. Um, the compound movements that he did were all very controlled. And he didn't seem to go to failure on most of them. Um, so there's that. And the the things that he went beyond failure on, i.e. force reps, whatever you want to call it, were machines. So safer, safer, uh, you know, ways of doing things. And But I really think what the secret to Dorian's success is, and I think the point that a lot of people miss, there are tons of dudes that train like Dorian that don't look like Dorian. What made Dorian great was Dorian's discipline. Uh, there is a story, and I don't know how true it is, but I, I, it was said that he did not cheat on his diet the entire time he was a pro bodybuilder. He didn't miss a meal. He didn't cheat on his diet. Um, there, was, there was a funny story where, uh, I think it was after the Olympia, don't quote me on this one, but I recall that uh, they had pizza or something like that, pizza and donuts, backstage pizza, and all the guys were pigging out on the pizza, and... Uh, Dorian didn't didn't eat it, and Kevin Lavroni asked him, you know, when when do you start your uh, when do you start training for the Olympia next year? And Dorian told him tomorrow. <laughs> so, it, you know, I, I could be slaughtering that story, but that that you know, I'm paraphrasing, but that sort of gives you some insight in his mentality. Most motherfuckers can't go six days without missing a meal or fucking their diet up, much less six years. And so, to me. That is where what separates a gym bro from a real bodybuilder is having the discipline to stick to your diet day in, day out, um, having the discipline to do controlled workouts with, with perfect form, having the discipline to use proper PEDs in a manner that is conducive to hypertrophy, getting rest and recovery. Dorian never partied, never went out. That He did some after he retired. But Dorian was pretty much a homebody from what I understand. He went and trained and he <laughs> hung out at his house. He ate his food. And that's all he did. And that's what the most top bodybuilders, that's the way they did. And, you know, it's it's funny because I mentioned Kevin Lavrone or Lavroni, whatever his name is, it, in that video. It, he, by all means, had better genetics than Dorian, but he didn't have Dorian's discipline from what I understand. So... Yeah, maybe he would have been Mr. Olympia if he had Dorian's discipline. Uh, but that that's really what separates the the il, the guys that are elite from each other. And any anybody, you know, I, I, I see it with myself. When I am structured and disciplined with my diet, when I have clients that are structured and disciplined with their diet, that's when you make the best progress. I see it over and over and over again. I see when, when I can get guys locked in on their diet, and they can stick to it, and they follow a plan, they make the best progress of their life. They just do. And that's the lesson I think that we can take from Dorian. You know, I his training was smart. His training was intelligent. I don't know if it necessarily is conducive to an older guy like me. You know, if I was back in my 20s, I definitely would train sort of that way maybe. Um, I don't know. I think training has evolved, and we, we know more about what works with training now than they did back then. But he just figured it out on his own. Um, I think training beyond failure is risky when you get old and your joints are suspect and connective tissue suspect. So you have to be smarter about training as you progress into your 40s. So I don't think a DY style program is smart in your 40s. If you want to do it, you know, that's a young man's game, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, hopefully this helps you understand how Dorian trained and what made Dorian great. Um, you know, this is just my take on it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you think I'm a fucking idiot or asshole and I've got this completely wrong. Please tell me so. Thanks for watching, guys. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, 
muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.